This means that roughly 213 youths are pulling the shots in the vast majority of the news being presented to Americans, which is then passed on across the globe. Let's say the situation in which we have a lot of Americans that are still controlled by some criminal masterminds. At the very least, CNN, Fox, and all the other outlets want one thing, our attention, and some of them will do anything to get it. People are more likely to pay attention to and remember negatives. Media outlets know this, which is why you'll find more negative news than positive news in your feeds. It's polarizing, engaging, and keeps us glued to our screens, which in turn results in more revenue for advertisers who are literally paying for our attention. And once we start paying attention, the algorithms of social media take over and all of a sudden we're constantly being fed news that confirms our beliefs and further solidifies our already skewed worldviews. It's no secret that controversial content, the content that triggers an emotional response, is the content that performs best, gets shared most, and circulates longest. So, whether we like it or not, we become bombarded with an endless scroll of polarizing content that only manages to make us even more skeptical about the world around us and suspicious of anyone who does not happen to share the same exact beliefs. This kind of reporting and these stories that we propagate throughout our society end up dividing us instead of bringing us together like the stories of old did. The sad reality is that, whether the world is getting worse or not, the media will almost always make us think that it is, simply because it's good for business. Wow! Oh, oh yeah. yeah! So, we've got our deadly disease. Now, we just have to blame it on something that's in every household, something that people are a little bit afraid of already. The truth, which should be an unbiased representation of facts, is no longer at the core of news reporting. The stories have become much more important, and stories that elicit negative emotions often get more eyeballs, reactions, and ad revenue. As a result, the problems that are constantly depicted in movies, news outlets, and on social media are relentlessly overstated to the point where we might feel it's even hopeless to do anything about them. What's worse is that this constant exposure to negative information that is relentlessly pushed on us by these obsessive algorithms can confuse the brain such that it becomes almost impossible to differentiate between exciting fact and thrilling fiction. A study conducted by three MIT scholars in 2018 found that false news spreads on Twitter substantially faster, farther, and deeper than the truth. The research also found that this misinformation wasn't spread through bots, but by actual human users, like you and I, retweeting. Just like these algorithms, our brains recognize that the most polarizing information, whether true or not, is the information that will go viral and elicit the most emotional response from the public. And so we hit share or quote in hopes of getting that viral tweet without first verifying if the information we're spreading is accurate. Another reason why it seems like the world is substantially worse than what we see in front of us is that the news talks about things that did happen and not things that didn't. We don't hear about wars that never started due to successful peace talks or shootings that were prevented through proper policing. We barely hear when unemployment rates go down and when the economy is experiencing a turn for the better. Because again, it's just not as exciting as bad news. Sadly, as long as terrible things keep happening on the face of this planet, there will always be enough negative reports to fill the news, especially with smartphones now allowing people to become amateur reporters and crime investigators. The mean world syndrome speaks correctly to our most innate fears, which then trigger our fight or flight instinct. When we watch a reporter covering a war zone, a shooting in a residential area, or a terrorist threat, our body naturally becomes flooded with hormones and chemicals designed to keep us on full alert in order to save us from the mean and bad world. While these survival characteristics were essential in our hunter-gatherer days, today all they manage to do is lead to anxiety, stress, and even trauma. But the world isn't as bad as we think it is, only the stories are. This is why to combat mean world syndrome, we have to take back control of how we're thinking, feeling, and reacting to the constant stream of negative or violent news being depicted all around us. The truth is that the world today is much better than it has ever been. Don't get me wrong, humanity is far from perfect. There are still conflicts in many places around the world, human rights issues we need to tackle, climate change problems we need to fix. But the world has never been as good as it currently is, at least for most of us. Advancements in healthcare technology have increased our lifespans, decreased morality rates, and improved our living standards. We haven't witnessed any world wars for decades, we've grown more tolerant of each other and more accepting of our differences. Violence has steadily been on the decline since 1946, there have been fewer famine deaths in the past decade than any other time in human history, and extreme poverty has been declining literally by the second. Yes, we face harsh realities on a personal and global scale every single day, but when tragedy, crime, and war are presented as the norm and not the outliers, 
it's only natural for us to feel angry and afraid. We have to choose our information sources carefully and not let the obsessive algorithms of social media dominate our perception of the world. We have to be conscious of our approach to news and to the way we think. The next time we're spreading the conversation, we're going to be just a little bit more specific. Is this fact or description? What more evidence is there of specific truth? What's the context? Or am I just being manipulated to all the dots and themes of fear and suspicion? If you turn yourself on a more platform serving the industry for its content, be conscious of this. Make sure you diversify your news feed to include positivity to balance out the negativity. At the end of the day, we're a storytelling species, and if we've learned anything from our history, it's that the narrative we share with one another is the most important thing. Just like in our hunter gatherer days, the tales we're telling now will have a great influence in shaping our culture and our people. It might be time that we go back and tell stories like the wild pig and the sea cow. Maybe it could be. We can cultivate the values that truly make us human, like caring for one another, being compassionate, and giving people the benefit of the doubt. The world is not as mean as the media wants you to believe. It's time we stop letting them lie to us. That it is. At the small forward position. Greg, I think it's gonna be TikTok is far more dangerous than we thought. In the past two years, at least 15 kids, aged 12 and younger, across the globe from Milwaukee to Sicily, have painfully passed on after attempting what seemed to them like a harmless challenge they found on the world's most popular app, TikTok. The Blackout Challenge encourages users to record holding their breath until they passed out and viewers could essentially watch as they regain consciousness. Despite the fact that this is obviously dangerous for anyone on the planet, in the hands of children, the trend had far more devastating consequences. The Night Bowl Challenge, Penny Challenge, the Milk Crate Challenge. Time after time, we've seen TikTok spring up one dangerous viral trend after another, all of which puts users, especially younger users, in potential serious danger. In our previous Aperture episode, we looked at the mental health effects of TikTok, but it seems as though the self-inflicted risks directly linked to the app are more far-reaching and have greater consequences than you could have ever imagined. From health and safety to privacy and security, given the long list of problems that TikTok seems to pose to the general public, what do we do? What can we do? Can we fix TikTok, or should we just ban the app entirely? If you've opened TikTok, you'll find its genius upon first glance. An endless stream of content from strangers all across the globe created specifically for you by one of the most refined algorithms humanity has ever created. You get a rush of dopamine from watching dogs do dances to amateur chefs making elaborate meals. Before we look at just how dangerous TikTok has become, I think it's important for me to mention that it's definitely not all bad. TikTok's rise from the top was greatly accelerated during the pandemic. Everyone was forced to stay indoors without physical access to their friends, family, or community. To help us find a way to connect, young people flock to TikTok, doing silly dances and challenges to cure their boredom, and help them feel part of a community again. They found solace in the app, from doctors describing COVID symptoms for experiencing to a random comment saving people from potentially life threatening conditions. Whether you got bored at school or you were living in a happy home, you could log onto the app and see other people in the same exact situation as you, offering help, support, and a sense of belonging. Sadly, the reality, as with most things, is that there's far more than meets the eye. Just spend a few minutes on the app and instantly you can see just how difficult, almost impossible it is to leave. Today's people spend more time there than they do on any other social media platform with a global average of 96 minutes per day. And for some, the number is far greater than that. This, for anyone, is just way too much time on just one app. But it's even worse than the US that about half of TikTok's users are young people, many of whom are below the age of 13. Creators and users who try to stigmatize mental health on the app see the benefits of more people learning and talking about these issues. Isn't that only the case, though, if users are getting the right information? One of the greatest problems on TikTok is that just about anyone can buy a scrub on Amazon and claim to be a doctor, spreading misinformation with ease. There's no formal fact checking, so often we might just hear what we want to hear. If we have a symptom we're worried about, these leaders could have their web and be a fact that we be listening for dying when we're really just having mild allergies. When you think about it like that, you realize that the media is pushed to us by TikTok and actually worsen what we're feeling. 
The Grinch is about the relationship to our movie works, and we're continually getting shrimp the news of other anxious people. Is that the need to help us feel better or make us inspired? All these issues are without mentioning the things that plague every social media app like cyberbullying, social exclusion, or the temptation to compare ourselves to others. We get addicted to scrolling and posting and scrolling and posting and scrolling until we're convinced that we're just not as good as everyone else. The scariest thing about it is that no one is immune to the grasp of the algorithm telling the people who should be better informed. One doctor, Brian Boxer Walker, grew an impressive TikTok following by offering medical advice and reaching to other health related videos. Knowing this audience, he can fluent in the chance of going to be more relatable despite being middle age. He became so obsessed with going his following that his family had his age with intervention, how can he curb his addiction and fish his channel as a pleasant distraction rather than an obsession? In 2019 which is fixable, is a way to combat all those dopamine hits we feel every time we open the app. The problem is that the app wants us to be addicted, that's what keeps users, increases downloads, and stays relevant. We can put restrictions on our screen time or make our phones require breaks from the app as much as we want, but if the app doesn't change, chances are that we won't need it. And for most people, that's okay. They might obsess over the latest TikTok games or like their local parent themselves to a beauty influencer, but they'll be fine. Their life won't be dramatically altered. But for kids, the potential damage is much higher. TikTok took down 41 million underage accounts in the first half of 2022 alone. But that's a fool's errand. Those users to just sign up again with a different account. TikTok's army of 40,000 global moderators gave the potential to help the videos, but it's an impossible task to watch everything. Over a billion videos are viewed on the app every single day, and each mod would have to review 25,000 videos, and let's say the videos average out to around a minute each. That's still 400. 16 hours of content to watch in 24 hours. It's literally impossible. So how do we protect kids? There's no effective way to block underage users from social media platforms because it's impossible to verify their age. But what if it wasn't? In 2021, TikTok met with providers of facial age estimation software, which can distinguish between a child and a teen and can work without directly identifying an individual or storing any data. This could be a game changer for an app that's trying to be safer for children. But unfortunately, child safety isn't the only thing that's going on on TikTok. Facial recognition technology on an app that's been accused of spying on its users and sharing data with the government wouldn't be a great look. We can't really talk about TikTok in today's world without talking about privacy. Most of us know and ignorantly accept that our data is being stored, seen, and used in some way when we search the internet. It's the classic accept all cookies option without thinking. It was TikTok and its parent company ByteDance taking it to a new level. An internal investigation found that a group of ByteDance employees was found to be surveilling several U.S. journalists who covered the app in an attempt to track potential anonymous sources. In 2020, the security update on the iPhone caught TikTok tracking the keystrokes of Apple users while on the app. But here's the thing, ByteDance isn't the first company to be accused of this. Uber and Facebook have been known to track the location of journalists who report other apps, just like TikTok employees were found to be doing. And in more than 124,000 documents leaked to the press in 2022, spanning 2014 to 2017, Google was shown to be doing everything it could to bypass regulations across the globe. Meta, Twitter, Google, and even Apple all collect and use our personal data in some way. So, what's the big issue with ByteDance? Geopolitics. ByteDance is a Chinese company. TikTok says that it doesn't share user data with the Chinese government, but politicians, journalists, and other critics are quick to call it bluff. China already has a practice of stealing massive quantities of data about Americans and other governments, but do TikTok and its billions of user profiles offer a more direct line? If the security concerns turn out to be true, we must see widespread fraud, hacking, or influence operations launched through the platform. As a result, United States lawmakers have issued warnings about the app and enacted executive orders to address the potential security risks it poses. 
calls from inside the U.S. Congress have a repeat of modern day politics, brought Republicans and Democrats together against a common enemy. Closed doors talk between tech top executives that will commit more foreign investment in the U.S. have been going on for years. There's a security contact in negotiations with the Treasury Department on how TikTok will handle Americans' user data. All of this in an effort to fix things, to curb the threat, to limit our exposure as users. But will it work? Many think that contracts, talks, and hearings won't get the job done, that fixing just isn't an option. The calls to ban TikTok in the United States and many other countries grow by the day. The U.S. military is only up in 2019. Now, TikTok is off limits on all government devices, and there's a bill sitting in Congress to prohibit it completely. Take a second to think what that would look like. The most popular app in the world are unavailable in the United States. Whether these revolts, cheers, confusion, and the destruction of society is made. Of course, there are consequences. 